The Lord be with you. Good to see you here this morning. Uh, at, at the first service this morning, my name is Steve Samuelson, and I'm the supply pastor. Uh, for those of you visiting here, uh, you should know that I'm the brother of Sarah, the regular or irregular pastor, uh, <laughs> however you want to refer to her. Uh, she's uh, uh, looking to be back in a few weeks, and I'm very excited for her and for the congregation. Yeah, won't that be great? Um, now, okay, uh, a few weeks or more. Is that better? All right, so pretend I didn't say that. All right. Um, this morning I uh, got in the car. And it is so dark at 7.30. I couldn't believe in just two weeks. I mean, two weeks ago I lost my phone. It fell off the top of my car on the way to church. But if it happened this week, I couldn't have found the phone because it's just so dark. But I got a great picture of the, um, of the sun coming up over Stony Lake, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'll show you after church if you want to see it. I want to thank, um, let's see, Oliver Gorton for being our acolyte. Yeah, oh, is that, is that a grandma clapping? Yeah, all right. And uh, I want to th thank the people who made the, um, the snacks. And I'm just saying, Danny, that those pumpkin spice muffins are the very best. So if, you might want to skip shaking hands with a pastor and get out there to the coffee <laughs> right away. And thank you to Randall for being the assisting minister. And especially thank you to the Barnhills for providing that beautiful music before the service. We are blessed by you. Hello, Joel. Glad you could. You're right on time. We are, we are early and you're on time. Good go. All right. Um, I think that's all the announcements. Oh, I know. There was, there's, you can, most of you can read the announcements. Um, but there's one that you should note that we wear red next Sunday. Steve, you're a week early. Uh, you, better early than late, yeah. It's Reformation Sunday next Sunday, so we always wear red on that day. The pastor will be wearing, wearing red stoles. And some people will be bringing their red hair. And uh, well, <laughs> Carolyn. Um, so get ready for that day. All right. We'll have a moment of silence to uh, get serious. Pardon me, you have an announcement, Carolyn? Yes. Well, I Stand up. I just want to reiterate, as Pastor said, next week is Re Reformation Sunday, but we're going to have a, a wonderful play um, for you here um, just after the gospel. I think that's where, where we're putting it. And um, it's going to be great. The actors are great. Um, there's going to be props. And I mean, it's going to be a little mini play right within our service. And so don't miss it where you're read. And uh, come and um, learn more about the Reformation and Martin Luther and um, Spalatin and Tetzel and all of the things he had to do with everything. And um, certain people will be in it. Um, <laughs> And uh, you, got a, you got a tick? <laughs> cert, certain people will be in it for her first time here at Trinity. So um, it, will be, it will be really good. So if you're not here and you're watching online, it will be better in person. But, uh, you know, show up in your, all your red garb and, uh, and enjoy our, our program. I am not sure whether the children will stay or not. You know, that there, there can, you know, we're talking about it. I haven't talked to April yet, but um, it's a possibility that uh, maybe they'll stay for it. And okay, this is getting longer than the sermon. Well, you know, All right. I just want to make sure everybody's here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I, I wanted to add to what you said. Um, of all the denominations in the Christian church, in, the, in America anyway, um, Lutherans are the only one who celebrate Reformation Sunday. Isn't that interesting? They don't celebrate it in the Reformed Church, Christian Reform, and they sure don't celebrate it in the Roman Catholic Church. So, uh, come, and, come and celebrate. 
a moment of silence now, and then uh, you can ring the bell. Thanks. Let us rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Like sheep, we all have gone astray. But like a faithful, loving shepherd, God seeks us out and calls us home. Let us confess our sin. Lord Jesus Christ, you know our sin. We want you to do whatever we ask of you, but we are unwilling to do what you ask of us. We want to sit beside you in your glory, but we fail to stand beside you in your suffering. We want to be first in your great kingdom, but we are among the last to serve the least. Forgive us. Pour out your mercy upon us and wash us clean in your saving grace. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Hear the promise of God. Those who love me, I will deliver. When you call me, I will answer. I will rescue you from danger and show you my salvation. Believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hymn 823. Praise the Lord, oh. Lord is our dwelling place. The Lord is our dwelling place. The Lord is our dwelling place. A temple that will stand forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God, that you have called us to this place to hear the promise of your holy word, to be immersed in the font of your grace, and to drink the cup of your blessing. Draw us deeper into your presence and send us out to love and serve. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. John Wines is going to be our lector. John, I want to introduce the lesson for a second. Sure. Uh, the second lesson from Hebrews uh, recalls that the high priest has this function within the Jewish community. And then goes on to say that Jesus is our high priest now uh, with his revelation of God's blessing. The Old Testament lesson comes from Isaiah. Now, Isaiah has three parts. There's a first Isaiah, second Isaiah, and third Isaiah, but it doesn't say that in the Bible. In the middle is this section called 
Deutero-Isaiah. Whenever you, uh, Sarah comes back here, be sure to refer to Deutero-Isaiah, okay, so that she knows how much you know about that <laughs> prophet. And in Deutero-Isaiah, there are four suffering servant songs. That's what they're called. They're poems. They talk about a suffering figure that we see now as Jesus. And you're going to recognize these words if you ever listen to the Messiah at Christmas. All of these words, practically all of them in our lesson, are used in the, the work by Handel. And we hear in the Gospel lesson today, the lesson I'm going to read, about how Jesus, has, who has just proclaimed his coming death a couple of chapters earlier, has this interesting dialogue with James and John who don't quite get it. We'll talk about that. Thank you. Um, Isaiah 53 is well known as the uh, Messianic uh, uh, prophecy. Uh, and you have to realize this was prophesied seven centuries before the birth of Christ. So um, many scholars point to Isaiah as uh, which Pastor Steve referred to as uh, setting the scene for what is to come in the future for them. First reading, Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 7, chapters 4 through 7. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we, are, we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, Yet he did not open his mouth, and like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before his, she his shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. And when you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The psalm today is Psalm 91 located third of the way into the red hymnal. We will read it responsibly. Please read the indented portion, starting with verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our second reading this morning is Hebrews starting chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Every high, high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself 
is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, these are the other 10 disciples of the 12, besides James and John, They began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. You may be seated and kids can come forward for a children's sermon. You want your brother to come with you, Ellie? Did you ask him to come with you? All right. Be a good big bro. Okay. Oh, and here we got some more kids. You can stand up because I'm going to have you do some stuff. Oh my goodness sakes, I love to see you kids. You're so darn cute. All right, so thank you. You can just turn around. I'll just turn, stand down here. You can look this way because everybody wants to see your faces. All right, let's, let's make some uh, hand signals for things we do to give messages. If we're going to say hi to somebody, what do we do with our hands? We go like this. If we want to say goodbye to somebody, what do we do? We wave goodbye. If we want to say, um, uh, yes, you did a great job, what do we do? Write this? Yep, okay. Um, if we want to say, we follow Taylor Swift, what do we do? <laughs> Go like that, right? Make that sign. Now, we also use our hands if we want to see that God loves us. Follow me, come here. You may need to do some lifting, Grandma and Grandpa. Here. So when we come in, here's the way we show that we are loved by Jesus. We take this with our hands. Hold to pick up the kids. We put our hands in. You can use your fingers, just like this, right in the water. Just go ahead. It's just a little cool, just like regular water. Okay. And then you make that sign with your hands on your forehead. Because this is just like that. Because this is a sign of the cross that we make at baptism, and we remember that whenever we come to church. So whenever you walk by this place, you can do that sign on your head. You can do that as many times as you want. 
And then one other thing we say is, because some people can't hear. Did you know that? Some people don't have hands, ears that hear well. You can say, I, like this, I love you. So when you go back to your places, you go over there by your grandma and grandpa, and you can go back to your mom and dad, and you can go back over there to your pew. Come on. And then you all are going to practice doing it together, okay? All right, so look to, your grand, to your, all the people in your family, and you all look to the people around you. Are you ready? Here we go. I love you. Turn to the people behind you. You ready? Here we go. You can stand up for this. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. To the people all around you. Don't be shy. Here we go. I love you. Thank you. You may be seated. Good job, kids and grown-ups. All right. All right. Are we all set? I'm looking at your hand gestures, Fran. Am I doing anything bad? Oh, you're getting kissed for Sunday school. I thought you were my wife. I must have said something bad. All right. Okay. One of my favorite cartoons is a, in the, from the New Yorker. Is a guy standing in front of his wife, and he says, I know I'm wrong, but I'm sure you can make me more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many people here want to see more political ads on TV? Raise your hand. <laughs> Robbie. I want, Robbie, you're, I'm with you. I want to see two ads. I would like to see a political ad where Kamala says, I cannot wait to serve in Donald Trump's cabinet and be on his side and support all of his programs. That's one I'd like to see, and I'd like to be, see an ad in which Donald Trump says, I love what Kamala brings to the ticket, her work as a prosecutor, her, a DA, as a senator. I think she's a great candidate to be debating with. If you saw that, what would happen? We'd all be calling 911 for <laughs> cardiac resuscitation, wouldn't we? I think that these texts today really speak to our political situation. I often talk about the fact that these texts were chosen by a group called the International Consultation on English Translations, ICIT. And I thought to myself, well, they must have chosen these texts to speak every third year, we hear this lesson, to talk about politics, because it comes right at this time of the year when we're having all these political issues. And James and John are basically lobbying for a political position. Jesus has said he's going up into this, the heavenly kingdoms, he's going to rule with God the Father, and these people are looking for a political position. Let me sit in your cabinet, one at your right hand and the other at your left hand in your cabinet. And when we're not working, give us seats on the 50, whenever you get free tickets to see the, the Wolverines or the Lions. And then I think to myself, wait, it's more than just for politics. It's about our, our own life and how we live our life. I'm going to give you a great illustration. Believe it or not, a man lived next door to me, moved in in Racine, Wisconsin, who was an ELCA. That's our brand of Lutheran, for those of you who are visiting. Evangelical Lutheran Church in America pastor. One of my colleagues. One night we were having a um, conversation, and he said, I came to this church because it is a larger church, and I am a larger church qualified pastor. And he said, you know, I, our, our, my church would be so big if I was uh, a pastor when you were there. He said, if we were at ministers at the same time, I would have crushed you, he said to me. <laughs> what? He literally said it. Well, about a year and a half later, it was exactly a year and a half later, he left that church, and I said to him, Arthur, oh wait, I'm not going to use his name. I'll call him Al Alan. Okay, <laughs> Alan, you're supposed to laugh harder. You heard the joke at the first service. <laughs> Try to get them to laugh. Okay, all right. I said, Alan, why did, why did you, um, why are you leaving this church? And he said, they lied to me. They said they were a large-sized church, and they are a mid-sized church, and I'm not a mid-sized church pastor. So he left and went to Iowa. When he went to Iowa, 
uh, my wife, we were meeting with him and his wife again. And my wife said, uh, how did you get that call to Iowa so quickly? And he said, well, I, I gave my name to the bishop over there. The bishop told me that he selected five names, and then he put me at the top of the list, and he said, so actually, I'm the best of the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. How'd you like him for your pastor? So my wife said then, I'll quit stacking it on him in case he's listening. This is tape. Um, he said, Kathy said, did you have to preach a trial sermon? And he said, oh, yeah, I did. He said, but don't worry. I wasn't nervous about that because there's nobody better than me in the pulpit. Which, remind, which rem, We're talking about pride here, right? The first of the deadly sins, having higher status. When he said that, I'm reminded of what a good friend of mine, Devin Strong, said. He said, Steve, and he's a pastor, he said, all pastors think they're A preachers. And all congregations think their pastors are C-minus preachers. <laughs> so we need to, all of us need to keep that in mind when we evaluate ourselves. Six years ago, 2018, there was a survey. And the survey said, do you agree with this statement? I have greater intelligence than the average person in, the, in our country. How many people do you think said that? They agreed with that. 65% of people think they're smarter than other people. <laughs> think about it. I mean, it's sort of breathtaking. I know I'm not smarter than half the people. I know I'm not. I was talking to, uh, you know what they call the person who graduates at the bottom of their seminary class? Pastor. <laughs> yeah, right. So we all pastors need to keep that in mind. So, you know how we, we, and we, and we think we're special, we think our kids are special. You've seen those bumper stickers. I am the proud grandparent of an honor student at Mitchell Middle School, right? You all, we've all seen that. When I see that, I wonder to myself, what do the parents of an autistic kid put on their bumper sticker? My child finally recognize a facial expression from one of their classmates. We need to be very careful about lavishing praise on our kids, telling them they're exceptional when what they really need is to have warmth and affection and to be told that they are loved. Just as an aside, I had a bumper sticker made for my Buick. I had a 2008 Buick that I loved. I had a bumper sticker that said, my granddaughter is in the 90th percentile for height. <laughs> I thought that would be... <laughs> I guess I didn't tell that joke at the first service, did I? All right. Do you, how many of you know Max Birnbaum? I don't either. Uh, but Max Birnbaum said the culture can be divided or classified according to two groups. One would be guests and the others would be hosts. He was, by the way, he was a literary essayist uh, a figure in the England in the late 19th century. Anyway, Max Birnbaum said half are guests, half are hosts. He said the guests are people who feel like they always have to be served. They're looking for something to be given them. And we see that in all aspects of our culture. We see it a lot in the church. When people go church shopping, they go to the church that's going to meet my needs. What can, they, what can that church give me? People, Max Birnbaum says, who are hosts, always look to see what can they serve to give others. I have somebody, a friend that I know pretty well, said, I don't go to church anymore. Why not? I don't need church anymore. I don't need something given me by the church. I'm sufficient by myself. Whereas a faithful person says, by being part of the community of faith, how can I serve those who are calling for the deepest needs to be met within their life? Well, I want to talk about one time I served. 
I was actually driving by the doors the other day. We were driving up at, by, we took the back road to Montague in that area. Gosh, what a beautiful drive-in you had this morning, right? And that's what we were trying to see. And my wife, right about when we were near your house, my wife said, what did you, what did you really like in your ministry? And I said, well, I told her a bunch of things. And then she said, what was the worst part? And I said, well, I can tell you the worst day. I took a bunch of kids to Tijuana, Mexico, 30 kids from our youth group, to work for Habitat for Humanity. It was brutal, sleeping on concrete floors. But the worst part was the, the baños. Do you know, what's that in Spanish? You know what those are, right? <laughs> right, bathrooms. These are the bathrooms. I hate to this, get close to the altar to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm sit here. The baños was made of plywood, four plywood uh, boards, and that the door was open at the bottom just to air it out. And so you could see what was going on by whether there, you know, I'm just, you get the picture, look under the knees and down. And it was awful. Kids would just come rushing out, pulling up their, their clothes because they couldn't stand being in there. Well, um, and it was a pit that had a toilet seat over it in, um, on a plywood board. And um, the toilet seat cracked. <laughs> so kids were getting pinched. <laughs> and they said, Pastor, the toilet seat's cracked. And I looked around to see, isn't there somebody from the facilities uh, department who can fix this? No. So I had to go to find a hardware store in Tijuana, buy bolts and, and nuts, and then it was my job to go in there into that banos, hold my breath, hope I didn't drop the nut, <laughs> and, and fix that toilet seat. And Kathy said, that, 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 I said, that was the worst job I ever had. And I, she said, why did you do it? I said, because I was the pastor. Now, at the ordination service, they asked the pastors this. This is from the Occasional Services book. Will you therefore preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and these creeds and confessions? The pastor says, ordinance says, I will and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness to the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you change the toilet seat in the baños in <laughs> Tijuana, Mexico? And if you don't answer yes, and I ask God to help me, you are not fit to be a servant because you have been called to serve, not to be served. To be a host, not to be a guest who's served by others. That's what we are all called to do, and I think these lessons speak to pastors, to you, to politicians, to all of us. We are to be serving others, not to be served. You know, Without a pastor here at Trinity, you've been out without a pastor for several months. How do you keep going? I think the way you keep going is because Trinity Lutheran Church looks on itself as a serving church. To be hosts. It's part of the culture of this congregation not to be guests. To be hosts. To make those quilts that we saw displayed two weeks ago. You look at the announcements today. Trunk or treat's coming up, isn't it? You do that. You have backpack blowout. You have 333 families in the food pantry the time before last. It's in the bulletin today. 55 families, families came to the um, baby pantry. It's part of the ethos of this congregation, and that's what keeps you going, even though you are seeing only substitute old white men lead your service, and sometimes an old woman, leading your services on Sunday, okay? And that's going to change, but this keeps you going because this is the culture of the congregation. Um, you sing, some congregations sing, every rung goes higher, higher, every rung goes higher, higher. 
Because you want to reach up and up and get closer and closer to God, right hand and left hand. This congregation sings every rung goes lower and lower. Lower and lower to serve those in need. And that needs to continue to always be our mentality. In my last church, if ever there was a family that looked to me like a quote-unquote promising family, I called on them on Monday. <laughs> I mean, I, was, I called in the middle of the afternoon and said, hey, can I see you tonight after dinner? And so I called on this family. And uh, sat down, had coffee and dessert, and at the end of this long conversation, they asked a red flag con question, which is often asked. Pastors are alert to it. And this is the question. What do you think about giving money away to the larger church rather than to our own local needs within our community and our congregation? You can see why it's a red flag question. And this was during the height of the AIDS crisis worldwide. And I said to these people as fast as I could, every dollar that the Lutheran Church sends overseas to Zimbabwe, and I happen to know this is a fact. Every, church that the, every dollar the church sends overseas to Zimbabwe is used to care for orphans whose parents have died for, of AIDS and to bury their parents. Every single dollar. Doesn't go for anything else. Education, evangelism, Bibles, anything. Just for that. I said, we in our church here in Racine, Wisconsin, we are the local church. For the people in Zimbabwe. That's how we feel. Finished the coffee and dessert, went home. Tuesday morning they called and said, we want to join your church. We want to join your church. We want to be part of that kind of congregation. In the, I'll close it up here. In the Hasidic tradition, rabbis are called Rebbe, R-E-B-B-E. -E. Whenever you see Rebbe, it means rabbi in the Hasidic tradition. The Hasidics are ultra-Orthodox Jews. You know, the hats and the forelocks, the whole business. A rebbe was asked, why is it, rebbe, that it says in Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, these words shall be, and these words are the Ten Commandments and the laws, the laws of Deuteron Deuteronomic Code, why is it that these words shall be put upon the heart rather than inside the heart? And the Rebbe said, It is not within human power to put these words inside the heart. Rather, we care for those in need. And when our heart breaks open from caring so much for those who need to be served, then the words of God drop into that hole in our heart and become part of us. Amen. i
Please join me as we profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed located in your bulletin on the bottom of page 3. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by the word, God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy God, we give thanks for bishops, pastors, and all lay leaders, and ask you to bless and guide them with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creative One, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Rise up in us the spirit of caring strength to help wildlife and their habitats. As we pray for the healing of the lands in areas like Colorado and Montana that have been devastated by wildfires, as well as areas of the southeast that have been ruined by the hurricanes and tornadoes and can no longer provide shelter for your creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Empowering one. Fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service that guides them to be honest and to prioritize the needs of young, your people. Strengthen them to seek justice and equity so that all may live in peace. We especially lift up those in North Africa, the Middle East, and Ukraine. God of grace, hear our prayer. Restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue and protect those who have been injured in the recent wildfires, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Bring comfort and solace to those who have lost their homes and loved ones. Nurse those who suffer disease, injury, or other difficulties with your healing hands and peace. We especially pray for John, Bob, Lillian, and Mary. We also pray for Kip, Donna, Pastor Sarah, Angie, Marla, and Lauren. We lift up Aiden, Gary, Jody, Brian, and we also lift up Jake and Nick, all the, and all those who served in the armed forces, both here and abroad. God of grace, hear our prayer. Saving one, we give thanks for all the saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in promised place at the feast of victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace, hear our prayer. trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Better share that peace with one another.
As our offertory is taken up, I'd like to sing for you a special song to reflect on Pastor Steve's sermon, a prayer from St. Teresa. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks Compassion on this world Yours are the half feet to which he walks To do good Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all your gifts of goodness and grace. Receive, Receive these, these gifts, gifts from our hands as a sacrifice of praise to you and teach us to honor you each day by our obedience to your will. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, for all is ready. Thanks be to God. You may sing the hymns that are appointed for the distribution of communion and come forward at the direction of the ushers.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord deliver and protect you. The Lord answer you when you call. The Lord satisfy you with long life and offer you salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 537.